Learning how to make videos can be daunting, especially learning how to edit the videos that you've actually created. Which is why in this video, I want to share with you how to edit your videos with Filmora 9. Filmora 9 happens to be one of the best softwares that I've used. When I say one of the best, I'm referring to one of the low budget, low end premium softwares that I've used, at least in the last one year. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how I edit videos with Filmora 9. I'm going to talk about the overview, I will talk about how to import media files. I'll talk about how to cut your clips. I'll also talk about how to add transition to your videos. I'll talk about how to use multiple tracks. I'll also talk about how to add text or animate your text on screen. I'll also talk about how to add effects to your videos. More importantly, I'll, after you've done all of that, I will share with you how to export and share your video, whether on YouTube, on Facebook, or maybe you are even creating your videos for Instagram. With that said, let's get started right about now. I'm currently using Filmora version 9.3.6.1. As soon as you launch Filmora, this is the first thing you find. You to select the aspect ratio that you want to use. Now, if you are editing for YouTube, best is to use a widescreen. If you are editing for Instagram, that is, you want to use a square video then you can use one by one if you are editing for igtv for example you want to use portrait 9 by 16 now that portrait is an invert or an inversion of this wild screen now these are the three main video types that you can use online all these these two types you basically may not need to go that route now after you've selected your aspect ratio the next thing you want to do is to select your new project to so click on new project let me quickly walk you through the overview of filmora right about now here is your media folder here is where your audio can be found this is where you have titles where you can add um, text to your video this is where transition can be found this is where you have effects this is where you have elements elements are other things that you add to your video and this is where you have split screen now for this video because i'm going to make this video as basic as possible yet so that you can actually do everything you need to do with editing videos i'm going to keep it simple very very simple actually so that's that for that now this part where you can see my mouse here this window where you can see my mouse here is the window for importing video It's called your media tab it usually works in association with this media box here and this black part that you can see on my screen here this is your preview window and right here underneath here where you have this bar here where you can see me dragging my screen my the mouse here now this is where you have your timeline now the timeline is important in order for you to edit your video in fact all videos are edited on a particular timeline now this is the timeline for filmora and everything you are doing here will be showing up in the preview, preview window with that said let's look at how to import media first then if you click on this box here this plus here you can see it shows you that you can actually import videos from here i'm going to look for videos that are recorded on my phone so that i can actually use that for this video so this is a short video this and then you can see imported file imported now once you import your file one of the challenges you may face is when you try to drag your file to the timeline Filmora will pop up this that the resolution of the frame rate or the frame rate of the video that you are importing is different from what you have selected on your project settings. So you can either choose to go ahead with what Filmora would have um, selected or you can choose to keep the settings and um, you can choose to match it to media or you can choose to keep the settings. That is when you keep project settings, it means that it's going to fit the project that you selected. But in this case, I'm going to use 30 frames per second rather than the 25 frames per second that Filmora automatically chose for me. So I'm going to choose 19 by 1920 by this and then I'm going to click 30 frames per second. Now, if you want to adjust that yourself, you can come to file here and then choose project settings. And then you can basically adjust that here. Even if you want to change the aspect ratio of the video, you can adjust it from inside here. So let's say you are working on a video and then you suddenly realize that this video is no longer going to be functional for your widescreen. You want to change it to 
a an Instagram video or maybe a portrait video you can basically change that from here and then it means that you'll have to adjust what you are working on having imported the video on, onto my timeline let me now begin to show you how to actually cut the video so that you can actually splice your video so that you can take out when you make mistakes when you say things that you don't actually want to go out how to remove all the mistakes that you make in your videos so let's look at that now for that I'm going to Put on an earpiece so that i can actually hear what's going on when you are editing your video and you want to be able to see everything in detail you can basically drag this out here or you can simply click on this zoom to fit timeline so you can click it here and then it zooms to fit timeline okay so i need to take out that beginning part so if you want to cut you can select your tr video the file on the timeline and then you click on this scissors here or you can click it here now i usually like to work with this one here so i'm going to click it here and then now that you've got it one other thing you need to pay attention to when you are using filmora is the fact that when you want to edit when you are editing videos you need to be sure that this auto ripple on button here is on now when it is on let me show you what happens so if i click this and then i choose delete you can see it removes the space that I was supposed to create. Now I'm going to click undo. This is undo here. And then I'm going to turn off this auto repeat. So you can see auto ripple. You can see auto ripple off. Now I'm going to select the same video again. And then I'm going to delete it this time around. Now you can see with auto ripple off, that space is left blank. So it means when you are editing, depending on what you are editing, you need to always adjust whether you want to have it on or you want to have it off. And this is more important to note, especially when you are working with multiple tracks. When we get there, I will talk about that. So let me turn it back on and then let me delete. Now, I want to remove that silence. So you can use your mouse to drag your playhead or you can simply press your front arrow or back arrow on your keyboard and it will move your playhead to where you want it to go you can also zoom in very well zoom into the minutest detail in fact if you don't know how i did the zoom just now you can basically come here and drag this this way so this way you can see it's zoomed in and zoomed out so that's selected it shows that this is where the next sound comes in so i'm going to cut this as well and then i'm going to choose delete now let me play that so you can see i've basically removed the silence there so if i want to remove the silence here as well all i need to do is just repeat what i've just done just now so and then i select this and then i delete so that's the end i'm going to click cut this and then i'm going to delete as well so that is the video now that you've cut your video you've taken out the part that you don't like so let's say you want to add transitions to your video how can you do that so what do i need to do in order to add transition Sim simply come to transition bar up here on your menu up here just come to transition and then look for any of the transitions now the first thing you will find is when you open up transition or any of these you basically find everything selected in the entire library of Filmora now you can narrow them down by selecting basic 3d ripple speed blur warp blur anything it depends on what you are doing now I'm going to select dissolve here and then i'm just going to select it so that it dissolves into that video now let me play that so that you can see how that looks like so you can see that that transition is already added now if the transition is too long and you need to adjust it all you need to do is just double click the transition itself that is the effects of that transition double click it is going to pop up this particular window here and then you can basically reduce the length of that transition from here or sometimes you can actually drag it and it automatically reduces it by itself so i'm going to drag it down and let it be just maybe 14 seconds and then let me play that so that you can see how it looks 
So you can see that looks interesting. Okay, now that I have added transition to the video, let's say I want to add a soundtrack to that video or I want to actually lay something on that video. Perhaps maybe I want to add my logo or I want to add my social media handle or maybe I want to even create something, maybe an effect or anything on that video. Let me show you how that works. So, so now let's look at how we can actually add multiple tracks to this video here. Now in this particular example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically add a soundtrack. So I'm going to come to this audio here and then I'm going to look through this audio soundtrack here and then I'm going to try to choose one that I'm going to use so let me listen to the different audio soundtrack okay so let's say i want to use that if you don't want to use the preset or the preloaded audio that came with filmora if you actually want to get your use your own audio track all you need to do is go online perhaps to where you can buy audio soundtracks or where you can get license free audio soundtrack and then go download some and then import to these imports here so in this case i'm going to come here and then so this is my audio inside music here so let's say i'm bringing in audacity to lead the new soundtrack so let's say i'm bringing in this one so let's say that's the soundtrack that i want to use and then i drag it down here now if i'm playing this song that makes it too loud right i can't hear myself again so in that case you right click and then you choose adjust audio and then it brings out these settings here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag this down and then i'm going to play so let's say that's the end of the soundtrack the end of the video i'm just going to again i'm going to cut the audio soundtrack here and delete it so now i want to go back and listen when you are adding soundtrack you need to actually be very careful so that you don't one let your soundtrack overshadow your video then two that your soundtrack does not um, go out of line with what you're trying to do in the video every soundtrack has a mood maybe in other videos i'm going to talk about that but i learned that you to understand here that sometimes the mood of the soundtrack does not match the mood of the video so if the mood does not match you are going to almost instantly hear the dissonance within the video itself now you can also double click the file maybe the video or the file or the audio anything you double click on the timeline is going to open up the settings up here so now i'm going to drag this down i just want it to serve as background for the audio for the video not exactly to overshadow it okay so now let's look at how to create how to work with multiple tracks now working with multiple tracks is when you need to layer a lot of things on top of each other so let's say you are using a screen share or you want to do a b-roll and or maybe you need to add your logo or you need to add some other elements on top of your video how to actually do that for example the logo you can see on the screen here right now Okay, so let's look at how to actually do that. So what you want to do is you want to go into your folder again and then import your, um, your particular media file. Now, in this case, I'm going to click add video track. So video track number two is now added here. And then you want to go to import. And then you want to go look for the file that you want to import. So in this, so in this case, I want to bring in other to lead logo here. And then I click okay import and then i drag it down to the timeline now i'm going to need to bring my playhead to where the video is so that i can see now you can see that the video already the video now has a logo on it but the logo is covering our screen so in order to actually adjust it to where it needs to fit what i would then need to do would be to double click this or right click and choose adjust or show properties so i, I either double click or I right click and choose adjust properties or sometimes when you click this you can you can basically just click this button here and it shows edit so that way it shows you all this effect here now what i want to do is i want to adjust the size you can do that by dragging it down 
or you can come to this transform here and then just change the size the scale so you can bring it down here and then you can also move you can move x y direction now what i'm going to do is i'm going to move it here so i'm using the mouse now to move it so rather than use the time, the calculations there now this is the logo right here the logo may be obscured by the fact that it's not easy to be seen there so how can i make the logo clearer to the eyes what i need to do then will be to add a drop shadow so look at i'm going to add a drop shadow now so this drop shadow setting has just popped up and then i'm going to reduce the distance and then i'm going to increase the up either increase or decrease the opacity so that it's clearer and sharper to the eyes and now i'm going to click the direction so you can also set the direction of the shadow you can set it to the side you can set it to any side that you want let me choose a color so as to be sure that the logo is actually working now of right here now i can't see any difference in the shadow so i'm just going to choose a deep black and then i'm going to reduce the blur okay now i can see it show up so now i want to check the opacity the opacity i want it to be actual to really be visible so that's the black there you can see that now has a shadow around it and then you can increase the distance but this time around i'm going to bring it closer to it and then i'm going to reduce this and so with that when you are playing your video the the logo goes along with that so look at it now now if you observed the logo disappeared just now what that means is that your vid your logo only has a time limit it means it needs to stop here so you can see it disappeared just like when you are cutting a video anything you add to your timeline needs to be either extended or reduced so if you want the logo to go from the start of the video to the end of the video all you need to do is simply just drag it out to cover your entire timeline okay now that i've added a logo to my video how about adding some text so let's say in the area where i introduced myself i'm able to add a text to actually show my name so let me show you how to add text to your video when you are editing let's do that now i'm going to click add video track so now there's a video track and then you're going to go to titles which is where you can add text to your video now you can see under custom here i've already created custom text that i use but if you are just starting out it is normal for you to just see only these ones so you can basically look through all of these options here and choose to, and choose one that will fit what you want to do so titles for example cover the screen lower thirds are the type that show up like this you can see that but for titles titles kind of cover the screen like this so you can see that's how titles work and then subtitles are basically for captions as you can see there now end credits is what comes at the end of a video or another example like this so you can see that here we have a lot more options to work with but the one i like right now is this so i'm going to basically pull this in now once you find a text style that you like basically what you need to do is to drag it to your timeline to the particular layer that you've created for it and then you play okay so right now it shows that it's not visible so let me try a different type now since this video is about how to use filmora let me just add filmora here and let's see how that looks like okay so with this now i seem to like it because it pops my name now here's the interesting thing you can do in order to edit that you can click the text here and you'll be able to edit the text or you can 
click on this button here and click these settings here you remember if you click on edit it's going to pop up this or you can basically click on show properties it's going to pop up this as well so if you want to just clear the text and write whatever it is you want to write that's fine so in this case i'm going to write dio samuel now the other part is you can as well adjust your text so let's say you don't like this text you want to use a different text so in my case let me use the text that we use for all our videos which is oswald or oswald so i'm using oswald now and this is oswald right here so you can see now that i've changed it to oswald the space still looks a lot bigger than what i need now in case you want to create your own type you will find it in this custom here all you need if you want to create yours is to start with something that is currently available there then you double click come to advanced and then you can basically delete or do anything you want to do to it and then after you are done editing that you can simply click as save as custom and then you save that that way anytime you need to edit or create a video later on you want it to start all over again creating your text effect you have it as something that's already custom to you so here's a an example of that so if you look at here i, I have audacity to lead text look at it right here you can see how i've done that so if i'm going to use my name now so you can see this is more like it's custom to me and it's custom to audacity to lead here now all i need to do is just open it up and then I change the body of the text the content of the text so now I can change this to Samuel and I can adjust it so that the text is not too the shape the box is not too big big for the text so with that let's play that and if you want to animate your text let me show you how to do that in case you're wondering okay so if i create my text that way how do i animate my text all that you need to do is to come to select your text and then come to animation here and then you can work with any of these dozens of animation here okay moving forward in order to cover some other things i might have to do another video but right about now i want to find out from you do you like this video if you do so please go ahead and give me a thumbs up leave me a comment down below and tell me the favorite part that you like in this video and more importantly if there's anything else you want to learn about filmora please leave down in the comments below share that with me let me know what you would like to learn about filmora and perhaps i can use your question to actually create more videos more video tutorials on how to use Filmora and also to put in here Audacity to Lead is planning a, a two-day workshop that is spread across two weekends where you'll be able to actually learn in details how to actually produce your own videos the structure behind creating videos how to work on how to get attention with videos how to use video in your marketing for your people for your business and your brand whether it's your personal brand or your business brand we are working on that and interestingly the two weekends also cover how to actually launch your own podcast so if that is something that is interesting to you you can check down the link below you'll find a link that links that sends you to a google form all you just need is just to indicate interest and then we'll follow you up from there when we are done setting up everything we need to set up in order for us to have that we have training workshop it's going to be two weekends so you are not going to be in a rush one day is going to focus on podcast the other day is going to focus on video we are not going to overwhelm you with any technical stuff so everything is just going to be what you can do what you can start what you can work with so if that is interesting to you please go ahead and check the description down in the link below now that we've done all of this let's see how we can add effects to your video let's get to do that right about now so if you want to add effects to your video that is you want to add some effects to your video maybe you want to um animate some parts of that video or you want to add something to your video now there's effects here there's a tab for effect up here now effect 
sometimes it means that you can adjust the color you can adjust the settings you can adjust the um something that shows up in your video now there are two ways to add effect to your video you can drag the effect let me look for lut here so let's say this is the effect i want to use let's say i want to use something like this so um i'm looking for an effect that's going to look very interesting so okay good you can drag it and drop on your video like this and so this is how the video looks like now now if i take out the effect you can see this is how it looks now you can add it and drag on your video like that or you can basically create add video track and then you add it to your timeline that way you are adding it to everything else that is found in your video that is you are basically you can even drag it out so that it covers the entire timeline so that way you are not adding the effect to your videos manually you are basically adding it as a timeline effect so it's called adjustment layer that's what is called in premiere pro and in filmora here you basically just add it as an effect so you can see it covers everything that you are doing now i'm going to so now i'm going to turn off the effect here look at how it, this is how it looks this is how it looks without any effect this is how it looks with an effect now let me change the effect let me add a different effect this is cool film here as an effect so now you can see the cool film if i take it out you can see how it looks you can see how it looks with these you can see the difference now you can see that the effect basically affected everything in that video so this is how to use filmora to edit your videos i hope that this video has provided you with some guide and some tips that you can actually follow in order to create better videos for yourself whether you are creating videos for instagram or creating videos for youtube or you are even creating videos or recording your podcast as videos whatever it is you're doing i want to believe that filmora is something that can actually help you create the type of videos that will be interesting to you now if you've seen our video so far all of our videos on this channel have been created using filmora or have been edited using filmora so i hope that this is helpful to you if it is please go ahead and subscribe down below turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the conversations happening here if you also like to learn a couple of things about creating a podcast or working with other videos you can check you can check the my screen right now for some videos that can help you do that and with that said i am Dyer samuel once again and i'll see you next time or in the next video